Okay, in today's video, we're going to go over a problem involving static equilibrium. And this is the situation that we have. We have the step-by-step -step sine sign, which has a mass of 21.5 kilograms. The sign is hanging by this cable. The cable is attached to the beam. The beam has a mass of 12 kilograms and is 7.5 meters long. The beam makes an angle with the wall of 53 degrees. This is our, going to be our point of axis of rotation. This red point is our axis of rotation. The beam, if it needed to, could rotate about that axis of rotation like this. The beam is supported by the cable. The distance from the axis of rotation to the cable is 6.3 meters. We would like to be able to figure out what is the force of tension in the cable. This is static equilibrium in that nothing is moving, everything is static, and therefore all the forces and the torques are in equilibrium. We want to figure out the force of tension in this cable. Typically for these problems we sum up the forces in the x, sum up the forces in the y, set them equal to zero, and then sum up the torques also. Because we just want the force of tension in the cable, we do not need to use the forces in the x and the forces in the y, so all we're going to do is sum up the torques and set them equal to zero. Now, what produces torque? Well, torque is produced by force. So therefore, the first thing you should do is draw in all the forces. One of the forces is the force from the cable, another one is the force from the weight of the sign, and another one is the force from the weight of the beam, which I drew right in the middle of the beam, the center of the mass. Each force will produce a torque. So now we know the forces, now we can sum up the torques. The torque produced by this force, this force would cause this object to rotate in the counterclockwise direction. Forces that cause objects to rotate in the counterclockwise direction produce what we have to find as positive torque. So this force produces positive torque, so I'm gonna put down TC, that's the torque in the cable, and it's positive. These forces would cause the beam to rotate in the clockwise direction. Forces that cause objects to rotate in the clockwise direction produce negative torque. So I'm going to put down TC minus the torque from the beam minus the torque from the sign equals zero. Now you can see from this equation and from this diagram that the torque produced by the cable is in equilibrium with the torque produced by these two forces. These two pull in one direction, this one pulls in the other direction, the beam is not moving. Now, therefore, I can take the beam torque and the sine torque and move them to the other side. And you can see that the torque produced by the cable is equal to the sum of the torque from the beam and the sum of the torque from the sine. We are going to use the torque equation to solve this problem because we're summing up the torques. Now, just to clean up the diagram a little bit, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to move the sine out of the way. The torque equation, tau stands for torque, is equal to Rf sine theta. <clears throat> now, for each force, we need to know what r is, and we need to know what theta is. r is simply the distance along the radial vector. This blue, dis this blue arrow is the radial vector. r is simply the distance from the point, from the axis of rotation, to the point of application of the force. So it's this distance, and this distance, and for the cable, it's this distance, which we've been given all those distances. The forces are simply the forces mg, mg, and the force in the cable. The angle. Now the angle, I think we want to be really careful. The angle is a particular angle in this diagram. Theta is always the angle between the radial vector and the force. Between the radial vector, which we can extend, and then the force. Between the radial vector and the force. Well, what are those angles? Well, let's figure them out right now because we're going to need them. To help me, I draw this line, horizontal line, that shows me that this angle is 90 degrees. Well, if this angle is 90 and this is 53, then this angle must be 37. If this is 37 and this is 90, and this must be 53, and if this is 53, then theta for the beam is 127 degrees. It's not this angle or some other angle. It's the angle between the radial vector and the beam. Also, therefore, the theta for the sine is 127 degrees. Now, we're going to do the angle for the cable. If this is 53 and this is 90, this must be 37, and that means the angle, or theta for the cable, is 143. It's not this angle. It's the angle between the radial vector and the force vector. Okay, now we know everything except for the force from the cable, and we can solve for that. 
Now you'll notice here from this equation, the torque from the cable is equal to the torque from the beam plus the torque from the sign. I can solve for the torque from the beam and I can solve for the torque from the sign pretty easily, which we're gonna do that first. Then we'll set them equal to the torque from the cable and solve for the force. The torque from the beam is simply R, which is 3.75, half the length of the beam. The force is the mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the sine of theta. Theta is 127, and you'll get that this force produces a torque of 352 meter newton. Now, I want to point out that when we multiply the force, this is the force, times the sine of theta, the sine of 127, what we're really finding there, what we're doing in a sense, is we're finding the component of this force that is perpendicular to the beam, and that would be represented by this angle, excuse me, by this vector. It's only the component that's perpendicular to the beam that produces torque. So that's what we're doing here. I just want to kind of point that out. That's what the force times the sine of the angle is. It gives you the component of the force that's perpendicular to the beam. Multiply that times the distance, you get the torque. Okay, force times the lever arm. We can do the same thing for the sine. The sine is at the end, so it's 37.5 meters. It's mass, acceleration due to gravity, sine of theta. You get that the sine produces a torque of 1,262 meter newton. Once again, when we multiply the force times the sine of theta, we're getting the component of the force that is perpendicular to the beam, it's this component of this force that produces the torque. This is the force, and then this would be considered the lever arm, force times the lever arm. If we sum those up, we'll see that they that, that equals 600, excuse me, 1,614, and that is the torque that is produced by the cable. Now, I'm going to take this information to the next slide, set it equal to the torque for the cable, and solve for the force. So we're going to bring all the information. We calculated the torque associated with this cable is 1,614 meter newton, the sum of these two. We solve for the torque from the beam. We solve for the torque for the sine. We knew that the sum of these two would be equal to the torque from the cable. Now, I'm going to use this equation again. And now I know the torque from the cable. I know R for the cable. I know the sine of theta for the cable, or I know the theta for the cable, but I don't know the force. So I'm going to set this part of the equation equal to 1640 and solve for the force. So this is the force from the cable, which is this value right here, is therefore equal to the torque from the cable divided by the R from the cable times the sine of theta of the cable. All right, we know the torque is 1614. R is 6.3 times the sine of 143, do the math, and you get that the force from this cable is 426 newtons. All right, so there you go. That's how you do that problem. I think it's actually pretty straightforward as long as you know what R, F, and, th and theta stand for in each problem. Okay, so that is the force in the cable. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it helpful. If you found that helpful, you can do one or all of the following three things. You can subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent chemistry, physics, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video, or leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.